Gabby, are you all right? Are you choking? Here, lift up your elbows. I'm going to push on your stomach, okay? Oh, are you okay? Can you breathe now? Oh, man, that was close. <laughs> now let's break down the skills for child conscious choking. When we approach a choking child, there's a couple things we want to do to evaluate whether or not they're truly choking or not. One is ask them if they're choking. If they're able to respond to you verbally, they may have something stuck, but it's probably not in the airway, or at least it's not fully obstructed because they're actually able to move enough air past their larynx to be able to formulate a word. But if they're able to only nod or kind of that gagging, high-pitched squeaking noise, chances are there's an obstruction and it's fully occluding their airway. Another universal sign, if they've been trained to do so, or sometimes even naturally, is for them to grasp around their throat as if they are choking. It's at that point I'm going to say, are you all right? Are you choking? They nod yes. They have the universal sign with their hands around their throat. I'm then going to instruct the child to lift their elbows up as I lower myself to their level. The reason we want to get to the level of the size of the child is so that we don't put unnecessary pressure on their rib cage. We'd rather not break any ribs or cause any further harm if at all possible. It's at that point that we want to find an important landmark. We're going to find the belly button. Once we find the belly button, we're going to ball up the other fist with our thumb tucked in and place that tucked in thumb against their abdomen just above the belly button. Then we grab that fist hand and go inward and upward into their diaphragm. We're going to do that inward and upward thrust as many times as it requires until the object actually comes out, they're able to breathe and cough again, or the patient becomes unconscious as we lower them to the floor to help protect them from further harm. It's important that we continue to allow EMS to come into the home or the location of the child if we've already called 911 so that they can do an evaluation and ensure that we've not caused any abdominal injury, that there's no pieces of obstruction still remaining in the airway. And if there's not an EMS department on the way, it's always a good idea to bring the child into an urgent care center, a doctor's office, or the hospital so that evaluation can be performed there. If you follow these steps, the majority of the time, you'll be able to easily get an obstructed airway clear and get this little one back on track.